What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another daily video for you guys today. Well, I say daily, I did miss yesterday, but it was international break and I'll be real, when it gets to international break, news comes very, very dry and it's really hard to try and make content. So, if I end up recording every other day over the international break, I'm sorry guys, I'll try and maximise the content as much as possible, but there ain't really much to talk about unless I want to start talking about international news. I might do a watch along for the next England game, I don't know, if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comment section below. But in this video, we're going to talk about the fallout from transfer deadline day. We're going to talk about players that we wanted to leave the club, players that haven't left, and how Frank Lampard is potentially going to try and manage a bloated Chelsea squad. Before I start this video, if you guys haven't done so already, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button as well, and press the bell notification button to be the first to know whenever we release any new content. And yeah. Let's go straight into this video and two weeks ago Chelsea faced Barnsley in the League Cup. We won 6-0 and after the game when Frank Lampard was speaking in the post-match press conference he spoke about how happy he was about the players that had come in from the transfer window but he also spoke about a lot of unfinished business in terms of outgoings as well and he said there are decisions for me to make, for the club to make and for the players themselves to make. I have an idea of the number of players I want in the squad so we have healthy competition but not many players feeling like they're out of squads and not getting the minutes that they want. Now Lampard said he had an idea of the number of players that he wanted in his team for the season and even though we can speculate about what type of number he wanted, I'm sure the number wasn't 31. And The bigger issue for Frank Lampard is the established first team players in the squad that he's already made clear aren't key to his plans anymore and have tried to find other clubs but have failed to find it due to the market crash. And but I'm going to give three examples, Emerson, Alonso, Rudiger of players that Chelsea have tried to get rid of throughout the summer but they've just struggled to find a suitor that's willing to pay their valuation fees. Emerson's had a lot of interest from Italian clubs, Roma's wanted to take him, Juventus has wanted to take him as well but due to Chelsea's high valuation fee and their high loan offer as well, Neither club thought it was worth the deal. Uh, what was it? Rome ends up going for Alexander Kolarov as well. And Marcus Alonso is another player who we've struggled to get rid of. Inter Milan were really interested in trying to bring him to the club, but they couldn't afford the valuation fee either. Rudiger did look a lot closer though. Spurs were very interested in bringing him to the club and he had talks with Jose Mourinho as well. But he didn't really feel comfortable with the move. He thought he'd lose favour with the Chelsea fans if he went to Spurs for a season. And if you add to that the alleged racial abuse that he received from Spurs fans last season in the 2-0 win at their ground at White Hart Lane. And Roman Abramovich is just pure hate for Tottenham after Daniel Le Levy vetoed that Luka Modric deal in 2011. It makes perfect sense why this deal never happened. And Chelsea could have set a precedent with paying part of the wages for some, pres for some players. But they didn't want to set that precedent for future deals as well where other clubs would come in and say okay you've done it for these players now we want you to do it for us as well chelsea also didn't want to compromise on loan fees that provide a valuable source of revenue for the club over the last few years as we've tried to build towards that sustainability that the club has really tried to reach and Chelsea aren't the only top six clubs that have struggled to get rid of Deadwood as well. If you look at all of the original top six and the players that have gone out, the only two players that fit the same sort of bill as the players that we have and are trying to get rid of are Dejan Lovren, who's gone to Zenit St. Petersburg, and Chris Smalling, who's gone to Roma. The only transfer offer that Chelsea had for a decent amount of money was for a player that we didn't even want to sell after Bayern Munich re reignited their interest in Callum Hudson-Odoi. But even in that case, they only wanted an option to buy over an obligation to buy. But even in the case of the entire deal, this wasn't the sort of player that Frank Lampard wanted to get rid of anyway. So it was just a no story from him. Now, Marina has never been willing to sell on the cheap. And even though that has helped us out in so many cases, like Diego Costa going to Atletico Madrid for 60 million, Eden Hazard being sold for 140 million with one year left on his contract, 55 million for that bum Alvaro Morata as well. And this ruthlessness from Marina has done a lot in terms of helping us get some serious profit in our outgoings. But it's a high risk, high reward method. And in the circumstances of this transfer window, it was just a bit more risky. And that has left Frank Frank Lampard with a massively bloated squad filled with personalities that he's going to have to try and keep happy in order to keep the morale of the squad going. If you look at the left back situation for example, right now we've got three first team left backs all fighting for one position in Ben Chilwell, Marcus Alonso and Emerson. But if we're being really real about the situation, 
Cesar Azpilicueta, who starts at right back, is probably second choice left back over the pair of them as well, which is just going to do even worse to their confidence. If we talk about the centre back situation as well, Fikayo Tomori pulling out of the West Ham loan deal at the final minute, as well as Rudiger not finding a suitable club to take him on loan, has meant that we now have five centre backs fighting for what looks to be two centre back squads. I don't think we're going to be playing five at the back anymore. The Kepa situation as well, because of how poor he was last season and his high wages, we struggled to find interest for him as well, meaning we have three goalkeepers fighting for one position as well. Now, every manager does want good depth, and, the fi and with the fixture list more congested than ever, this, just, this does mean that it doesn't matter if we get any injuries. We are going to be, have so many rotation options. It isn't going to be last season where we're just injury FC and we struggle to get by. There is going to be hella competition for places, and any time a player drops out injured or suspended, there is going to be another player that can replace him. We don't have to have bit part replacements or move players into other positions to try and cope. We have a lot of depth. But that competition also breeds a little bit of annoyance from players who aren't going to be getting that sort of game time. Chelsea being out of the Carabao Cup already doesn't help rotation options. And even accounting for the fixture pileup, it is impossible for Frank Lampard to give every single player the minutes that they feel like they deserve. And it's going to be a massive job for him trying to work around all of those personalities. Antonio Rudiger is one player that's going to struggle to get back into the first team squad for this season. He's been admitted from every single squad lineup since the start of the season. And with Fakayo Tomori's loan move being cancelled at the last second, and with also Lampard stopping the potential move to Everton and trying to loan Rudiger instead there's a much bigger vote of confidence in Tomori's way and we know Lampard prefers the Chelsea youth as well so Rudiger is going to seriously struggle to see game time in the squad and with the Euros showing up next year as well and Rudiger really wanting to stake a claim for his spot in the Germany squad I could really see him leaving in January. Marcus Alonso is another player that's going to seriously struggle to get back into the squad out of all the three left backs, he's been hit, he's been at the club for the longest. I also think he's disappointed for the longest. Add to that the issues with Frank Lampard after the West Brom game because he tried going on to the coach after he got substituted at halftime and it made, had a bad look on the way the manager was presenting himself. I don't think he's going to be starting much games either. Kepa as well just simply because of how poor he was last season. I mean, Frank Lampard at this point doesn't even need to start Willy Caballero to show his lack of trust now. And I think the bar's been set so low that Benjamin Mendy literally has to play like he like he can't use his hands anymore or has to have about five or six disaster classes in a row for Kepa to actually have a look in at this point. I think it's going to be a huge struggle for the three of them. And Frank Lampard, fair play to him. He was able to manage the expectations of the squad last season, was able to assimilate a lot of loan players sorry a lot of youth players into the squad while also keeping his senior personalities happy as well but trying to do that this season as well with five or six new signings and about six of six or seven other players who we have tried to get rid of but struggled to get rid of as well it does look like it's going to be an even bigger struggle for him second time round but I think Frank Lampard can cope. He's got about two, three months to do this. I think when the January transfer window comes in, you're going to see a lot more players come out as well. If anything, Chelsea might be a lot more lenient the second time round because we'll see how much it's impacted the squad. All we can do is speculate. I hope it doesn't impact the squad too much. But it is something to look out for. There is going to be a lot of players that aren't happy with their position in the squad. We just got to hope it doesn't do too much towards squad morale. But let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Again, if you guys want to see an England watch along, let me know. Because that will be content anyway, so I don't mind banging that out. Let me know. Take care and up the gels.